Here it is. Now, I have to ask as a matter of course, what kind of experience do you have driving trucks? I drove deliveries for an antique shop up until this last run. Aha, precious cargo. You'll do just fine. And you can drive safely, can't you? I haven't any doubt now. It's only after what happened with Miguel this evening. What happened with Miguel this evening? Well, the dust is still clearing, of course. Perhaps he closed his eyes a moment or simply hit a curve too devilish. I do pity ill-fated Miguel. He was good company and slow to anger. But if we're speaking confidentially... Well, with all that lost product to be repaid, bourbon and glass dashed across the interstate, and a few casks, too. We're all just thankful he had no next of kin. So, let's see if we can ring up the dispatcher. Two little starts a truck and switches on the CB radio. A deep, monotonous voice drones from the dashboard speaker. 1020 on that load, come back. Up in the Hummingbird Cave, 1012, City Kitty. <laughs> That's really fun to say, City Kitty. This is a good time, dispatch. We may have found Miguel's replacement. Thought you might like to get acquainted. 109, come again. To Conway. Introduce yourself. Uh. Hello? Don't dispatch something impressive about yourself. They're very well regarded here. Um. You folks know anything about a moldy old computer? <laughs> no, uh, I guess I could drive a truck like this. 99 wheel holder. Gotta pay the water bill. Ah, so. I'm certain they'll call back before long. Let's take a look around the truck, huh? Alright. So... How... Exactly how long were Shannon and Conway gone in the church? Because from Ezra's perspective, they were gone for like a couple minutes. Let's take a look at the back. Looks like it's just about ready to go out. We have some good, strong folks in shipping here, so you never need to worry about loading if you don't want to. Bit hard on the knees and back at our age, eh? Of course, you'll have to unload at the destination, but that's the job. And some drivers like the extra shift stacking and loading here. I uh, shouldn't really do any lifting these days. I see. Well, surely we can spare a dolly and carrying strap. Or for your health and safety. Conway woke up on baled hay. What? What is this? Everything was too bright. His head hurt. The usual. Lysette and Ira argued loudly just outside the open barn door. She wanted Ira to take him inside and shower, have some coffee, get to the job. Ira said there wasn't time. Conway was in no condition. It was an important job. They couldn't put it off. Ira said to let the deadbeat sleep it off and then send him packing. He said Charlie could do the job. Conway stepped out of the barn, shielding his eyes. He tried to say something reassuring, but just sort of stumbled around it. Lysette looked away. Ira just spat and went inside to wake Charlie. Ira was a stubborn man, so Charlie went along and Conway drifted out again, and he didn't hear about the accident until months later. So, oh, so Charlie died while Conway was, well, drifting? So it sounds like Conway turned into a drunk for a while. And then 
drifted out, I guess. I don't know if they got kicked out or just ignored or whatever. So, what's next? Let's take a look at the tires. Oh, sure. I know you'll want to look. Kick the tires. That's a thing we do, isn't it? As though our knees could exert the kind of forces these tires see out there on the road. We're more likely to hurt ourselves. Isn't it the way, eh? Tires look fine. Oh, I'm sure. It wasn't the tires that failed our dear Miguel. We are quite sure. Conway sat in a dim room full of folding chairs. The walls and ceiling were painted with old smoke. Someone read from the book. He drank coffee with a little sugar. He listened. The speaker listed all the things we tried that we... Most people in the room were probably there by court order. A few others shared. They spoke in abstractions like a program of action, a good orderly direction, spiritual but not religious, religious but not spiritual, all the things we tried. Then it was over. I clasped sweaty hands through a short prayer and stepped back out into the morning. So, going to some sort of recovery program. He started walking. He was always walking these days. It was good to slow down. It felt clarifying, like a walking meditation. The road ran by a creek for a while. He took an unforeseen detour where the creek and road parted, following the edge of the water. He skipped a few stones alone, then stopped to consider an overturned boat. It was a kind of serenity, that wandering and looking without purpose. He was coming to rely on those moments. Now, what else can we show you? Control the wipers with this knob here. Do little fiddles with the controls. They seem to have a decent torque to them, huh? Can't say how they'd fare in an ice storm, but we must never delay a shipment. Better to assume the risk. Always clear skies down here. So I hear. But most of our product is delivered by surface roads, which feel rain quite often, particularly in the spring months. So I hear. They ditched class for the day to drive in the rain. It was pointless to stay. All review. He was a lost cause. And she didn't need it anyway. She was smart. Bored. It was time to cut out. Shitty day for it, though. 83 and Biblical Flood. They went to see a movie. It was some anonymous swashbuckler film about real men and women. Real tights, real lips, fake blood. They brought a flask. They smoked cigarettes, drank awful hooch, whistled buskets... <laughs> whistled buckets of rain. Whistled? I don't know what that means. She sang about someone she wanted once to have loved. Brown hair curled around her ear. She had a voice like Scotch whiskey. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She had a voice like Scotch whiskey. That's what, um, Johnny and Junebug said about the singer who performed that song. Remember they, they got the song from some woman who had a voice like Scotch whiskey? And they couldn't remember her name? It's like everything I've seen is made from fragments of Conway's memories. That's not to say Conway's memories are the only ones that have been used to fill in this simulation or whatever this is, but definitely one of the ones. It was time to go. Stiff drinks were wearing on him, and he felt a surge of dejection. He knew she'd keep singing. He thought she should sing for someone who deserved to hear it. He knew she'd find a ride, so he slipped down alone. He sat in his car and went over some options. Chicago, Toronto, Barrow, 
It seemed like a bold and impulsive gesture at the time. As he pulled out of the parking lot, he removed his hands from the steering wheel for a moment and felt the car drift into a decision. Years later, he'd think of this as the moment he himself started drifting. A modest technology, but suited to the job, eh? Plenty good enough. Headlights work fine, see? Do little fiddles with the controls. That's important. Most of our product goes out at night. You never know who you'll run into in the daylight. And dusk can be treacherously misleading with all that indirect light. The magic hour, huh? Driver sleep in the day, then? Sure. Those that sleep. Miguel pulled extra day shifts when he could. Sometimes he'd help me, you know, some sometimes over in bottling. He shouldn't have been out driving at dusk. Weird shadows. Soft light. Dangerous. Conway had to get off the highway. Too loud, too murky. He turned off into some gray cornfield in Indiana. He watched traffic and birds. Seeing those migrations close up, they looked random. He thought about the load in the trailer. Thousands of plastic cups. Somebody wanted those cups in Rockford that night. It wasn't going to happen. He was only human. He'd been out since the headlights were on. Didn't even stop for coffee. He cracked a beer at three, eyes on the road. Half past four, he dodged some stray cattle. The headlights were coming back on. Rockford could wait. Early morning couldn't be much worse than late night. What could they care? He just needed a few hours. So, moving on. Driver, come back. Ah, there's this batch. Now, tell them about your experience. Tell them the truck's in good shape. Tell them you'll start in the morning. I've been driving for a number of years. Decades, dispatch. 1033 dispatch, got two black eyes and a flock of crocodiles, come back. 104, back it down and prick your eyelids, driver. Come back, Lem. 104. Come back, wheel holder. Conway remains silent. To Conway, dispatch is addressing you. He's here, dispatch. Got your ears on? Good. Listen to this. Silence. So... I think that went well. Let's head back up to logistics and seal the deal, huh? I've got one more thing to show you. I mean, like, are we actually going to be working for this place? <laughs> Oh, perfect parking job. It's so cool just to watch him drive. Let's head back upstairs, huh? I have one more thing to show you. Wait, we... We only came here looking for some answers about this stupid moldy computer. Oh, the old man in the cave with the moldy computer. That black mold. It's drawn to whiskey. It feeds on ethanol fumes, you see. As we age the whiskey, some of it inevitably evaporates into the air. The angels share. Wait, let me read this again. This is important. So the mold is drawn to whiskey. It feeds on ethanol fumes. Oh, so the angel share is totally separate from the mold. It's just that the angels share, aka what evaporates off, is, well, the black mold, apparently, is attracted to it. Isn't the black mold... Like, wasn't the black mold accumulating on the crystals and stuff of the computer of Xanadu? 
Is the ethanol somehow there? It goes through the fence here and out into the caves. If we can scrape up that mold, we can usually apply some pressure and cold to it. Squeeze and condense the angel's share back into drinkable whiskey. Oh, so it absorbs the ethanol. That's why they were collecting the mold. It absorbs the ethanol, the whiskey, and they squeeze it and condense it to get the angel's share back. Okay, but how come they stopped visiting up there? Did they develop some new technology, maybe with the help of Weaver, that allowed them to stop needing to come up there to harvest it? Every drop counts when you're making a living on this stuff. So we'd go down and scrape it off his equipment, just like any other place it grows. He kept sending his people here to drive us away. <laughs> paranoid. Truly paranoid. Well, now we have the formula. So we don't need to go collecting mold. Yeah, so it's Weaver that helped them. Not need to do that anymore. But we didn't do anything to his moldy computer. He just forgot the password. One of his assistants shared it with me. Dome in air. That'll get you going. I'm sure of it. <laughs> he just forgot the password? I'm sorry, that's it? He just forgot the password. Maybe it's from all those... um narcotic shrooms that he's been smoking or something? I don't know. So, join me upstairs? They seem incredibly unfazed by the whole thing. It's like, oh yeah, that, that multi-computer, Donald, yeah, that's a password. Anyway, wanna come work for us? Like, what? Okay. If you don't mind. Are we changing our clothes back? Yes. Adding machine. Here it is. A beauty, wouldn't you say? It's an antique, you know. What is it? Why, it's an adding machine. This is where we come for our daily ritual. To calculate the day's interest and repayment according to the formula. I usually do so at the beginning of my shift so I know how many hours I need in order to keep up. Yes, I believe you'll do well here, sir. Happy to have you. Congratulations. You're hired. Wait, we can't... It's customary here to start each day with a shift drink. Let's make it special. Mark the occasion. This is the top shelf stuff now. Single barrel. He doesn't... Down the hatch. Venom Memore Moors. Decent enough. Welcome aboard. He's not working for you. We have to get back to this... Our... He has a delivery to make. What's this? Not working. Are you turning down this opportunity? She's right. I have to make this... Uh, I'm disappointed. And I'm afraid that leaves us with a delicate problem. Uh, as I indicated, this is the top shelf stuff you're drinking now. It isn't cheap. <laughs> now I owe them. Uh, if it's not your first shift drink... Uh, well, and there's the matter of this tour just now. My time and experience are billed at quite a premium. Uh, this is not good for you, my friend. You're in quite deep by my back-of-the-envelope estimations. Well, we have that in common, I suppose. All of us. Uh, yes, I'm afraid you'll have to work off, uh, work this off somehow. It's just the way of it. What's happening right now? You can start tomorrow. Take the time to settle your affairs, of course. The interest begins to compound immediately, and 
Well, uh, we'll go over the formula when you get here. I should get back to work. See you tomorrow, then. So, I guess I start in the morning. I guess. Shit. I'm confused. It's just the way these things go, kid. Huh. Well, that still gives us a few hours to roam, right? Where's that ferry? <laughs> I feel like that's the end of the act, probably. Yes, I knew it. Wow. That was amazing. That was extraordinary. Do we have an interlude now? Oh, it's mechanical. Five four context backslash. General wear on the gestural gear mounting apparatus may result in undesirable play between teeth and the context and history state machine gears, causing stuttering, slippage, resetting, skipping. I guess I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with this thing. Troubleshooting it. Uh, I guess it could be slippage. If left unresolved, gear slop can gradually throw limbs out of alignment, blend motions, and decontextualize gestures. See also section 1.8 general troubleshooting and 5.3 gesture context. Okay, what else? Oh, whoops. General troubleshooting apparently. Technicians of sufficient talent and experience may skip this section. General troubleshooting techniques include... Okay. Uh, that'll do, Book. He throws the manual into the river. <laughs> My savior, our friend here, is in a bad way. Any insight? Ah, that's Junebug. Time to, time to put that mammoth out to pasture, Will. I'm not going to say that, but apparently this person's name is Will. Uh, I try to stay clear of high voltages these days. I don't at all blame you, especially down here, on the water. I mean, sure, it's dangerous, but this is where she lives. Now, what brings you down to the Echo tonight? Just tagging along. <laughs> that doesn't sound like you. We drag some folks to a show, just returning the favor. I'm sure your new friends appreciate the company. It's no shame to be lonesome. We picked you up at the bureau tonight. Never seen you that far upriver before. I hope that doesn't mean you've been traveling on the zero. The bureau has great acoustics. You've got that right. Wow. I could sit in there for hours. Just listen to my breath reverberate through that weird architecture. Still, it's always good to be back on the river. I've been traveling this river for more than half my life. More or less alone. I think I've seen it change quite a bit in all those years. But I can't say for sure. The water has a peculiar way of making a person forgetful. 
Some nights I remember a place, but it's full of strange new people. And some nights I meet an old friend on an unfamiliar shore. I wonder which kind of night this is. Now we're on to Act 4. <laughs> the Mucky Mammoth. Looks like it's saved just now. I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Just before I end it though, I just want to say, my god, this game is amazing. Holy crap, it's so good. Oh, it is fascinating and atmospheric and gorgeous and it sounds amazing too and oh, the writing. It is really extraordinary. Okay, yeah, so I just looked at the dates. Um, Act 1 and 2 came out very close to each other, both within the same year in 2013. Act 3 took about a year to come out, and then um, Act 4, which we just started here, actually came out almost two years after Act 3 came out. So there's been quite a gap. I don't know if that's, like, uh, I don't know if that's going to be relevant to how the story is experienced, in the sense of, I don't know if they designed it expecting you to play it all kind of in one go, or if they were expecting you to play it with those kind of year-long gaps in between. But I, I do think it's worth mentioning and keeping in mind that the way I'm playing it now, this is happening right after the last act, but in real time it took about two years for this to come out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.